I mean, who's the better hero in these lineups, do you feel? Is, is there one that's going to be the driving force more so for their team here? Or do you think we're going to be seeing a similar level of aggression from both? Both lineups are in a way a bit disjointed and don't have um, like this very clear synergy. But I believe that is to Prepare Vichy Gaming's advantage this time around because mm -hmm. I think heroes like Sven um, and in a way Broodmother are very dependent on having a, a very clear strategy while the heroes like on VG Gaming side, Timbersaw, uh, Tiny, Slordar, these are like skirmish heroes through and through. They're very good at 2v2, 3v3 scenarios. Um, they're even good at you know getting solo kills. So I think that the game is going to draw out a bit, and I think it's going to be in the favor of Vici Gaming, and you're going to see um, Ice 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 just tear it up on, on the timber side. I think this is a very favorable game for them. Again, a lack of disables, he unfortunately has to face up against the Skywrath Mage, um, which is, you know, terrible, but that's kind of what's going to happen, yes. honestly. If, if yeah. the rest of the pool doesn't have any real good disables Seven besides the Sven Stun, it's very clear Vega Squadron are going to make up for it when something like a Disruptor or a Skywrath Mage. Yeah, and it looks like, I mean, at the moment, I don't know if this VG may be switching up the lanes after they saw that, because I think they do want to try and get Ice 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 versus the Brood, potentially. So they might just switch these lanes around here. It looks like they were, so they're, they're trying to get that Brood versus the, the Timber matchup that we, we were talking about in the draft camp. Yeah, and the Lich should be uh, paired up with the, either the, the Winter Wyvern or the Lich is with the Tiny, because they can't afford to just leave Tiny against oh, no. an SF. Oh. Okay, they're catching on to FY. Did they have the follow? Oh, it's hard to fly up to the high ground, especially with this. Oh, oh, oh free man avalanche. No. Burning's trying to move into the crush, but he can't quite close the gap. If Burning was there, if yeah. Burning had just been there a half a second earlier, that was a three-man crush and an easy kill on Skywrath Mage. Uh, but I mean, I, I think this top lane, though, as, as we're talking about, this is what we expected. Uh, this is two very good players on pretty much their signature heroes here, but is this just... How do you play around this as a Broodmother, knowing that you've got to deal with the Timbersaw? Well, part of the thing is take advantage of the jungle. Um, it's the same thing when you're matched up against an Axe in many ways, is that you just get your Broodlings, but you throw them in the jungle as much as possible and get the extra farm there. Because there is no, there's no real kill opportunities against a Timbersaw. He is so good against you because he also has an escape mechanism. The downside of Axe is that you can actually lose to the Broodmother when she goes webs and incapacitating bite and the level 6 can just hunt you down with insatiable hunger. The same cannot be said against a Timbersaw because he has that escape mechanism and he oftentimes will just out TPS you with his burst um, once he has that chakram. So you just try, try and get as much farm as possible um, via jungle and that's pretty much it. Looking at the other lanes at the moment, no one having the slightly better time at the moment. 6 for 0 against the 3 for 0 super. Both did have their respective supports, the Wyvern and the Scarf hanging around a bottom lane. We may see a bit of action going on. It's Burning and Femra moving quite aggressively. They might look to turn this. The Warp Price pop from Pasha gets the stun out to Fenya. The wrap round from Solo, and they'll look to take one. The Crush has come out, catches onto Pasha, but he gets out of the stun. He gets the kill onto the Lich. And now Solo looking for the body blocks. Can't quite find it though, and Burning will be able to walk this one off. And nonetheless, first blood there for Vega, and some very nice movement there from the supports towards the bottom lane, which was always going to be something we were going to be aware of, because Vici, with this dual lane situation, maybe trying to force some of the, the, the focus away from the mid lane, so SF's left on his own. But it doesn't work when it ends up you giving away a hero to the to the side of Vega. Yeah, that was very clearly bad positioning from Fenrir. I, I can't think of a scenario unless you're getting a kill, uh, which he definitely was not, where a Lich is that far forward. It, it just should not happen. Look at this. As well, burning already. He's leaving the lane with this invis rune. He wants, wanted to try and find something in mid, but essentially this is this is time down the drain here for burning. Yeah, no one. Uh, he seems to know about the invis pickup and is playing this rather defensively. I think he's expecting, especially with the lane far forward, that the winter wyvern was going to cut him as well. I mean, Burning, he's trying to give it something onto Sherman the Slayer, but it's, yeah, he's, he's going to have to find himself somewhere because at the moment the farm game for the cause of Vega is looking pretty strong um, in comparison. Obviously, the, the one lane at the moment that's going really well for each game it is that top lane. I mean, Ice Ice at the moment, 15 for 6 on the Timbersaw, level 4 as well. As expected, he's having a final time against the Spider. Mag is probably going to go for an Orchid build this okay. game on the Broodmother just because it's, um, quite strong versus the Timbersaw and is actually pretty decent versus the Tiny as well. 
the biggest question is whether or not he's going to be able to find that farm. Now, he's doing something pretty important right now. He's going to um, cut the creep wave as time goes on. It's best at level 5 where you get 3 spiders per round and you're really able to get a giant army pretty quickly. But um, this is going to be his best way to deal with the Timber Saw until supports rotate over. And it looks like the Winter Wyvern, they've got the early dust. Okay, and they'll pop it straight away, but it doesn't quite catch Mag there. Nice positioning, keeping himself in the tree Dyer's line. He should be fine. Is under attack. And yeah, Mag, he's well on top of this rotation. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. And bottom lane still, I mean... I, know it's, but I really feel this is an issue. The fact that you're effectively position one... Gary's only got 5 CS at 4 minutes in, and, and Pash is reaching on to 20. This this is not ideal here for the Slada. Yeah, and Burning, I think, has a very distinct playstyle, whether it's the, you know, AFK farm I mean, and oh. if he... Oh, 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 bloody God! I was just going to say, you know, Lich is good in this lane because you actually have a large amount of physical damage between Sven and Dazzle, but that Ice Armor will not make that, up for yeah. the nuke. Where's your Ice Armor now? This I mean... Shadow Wave is insane. I... Honestly, I, this is not fantastic for burning. It no. really isn't. I mean, whether it's on the AFK, like, split yeah. pushing anti mage, or it's on more aggressive, like, Queen of Pain safe lane, burning is, like, guaranteed early farm a lot of the times, and that's just the, his playstyle. You will, as a team, have to play around that, and this is very clearly not the case. Burning is going to be one of the most gimped heroes. Uh, I said early on in the draft that you have to change up your net worth now, where Ice 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 is going to be given a lot more priority. I'm not sure how that's going to fit with Burning. Yeah, I mean, I guess one thing that Vici really have to rely—they have to rely on Ice 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 to make something happen. He is level six now, but as a, as a Timber Saw, what what is the plan here? Are we going to see rotations for him, or does he have to sit in lane and kind of farm up his first big item really before he can afford to be that effective across the map? He does actually need to sit in lane because yeah. they don't have a better hero to uh, match up against a Broodmother yet. Uh, eventually, the Sven can do it rather easily, but for now, when he doesn't have any splash and he doesn't have those heavy stats that can deal with a Broodmother nuke, um, he can't do it. So, the Timber Saw is going to be spending a lot of farm time here. I'm very oh, oh, in lane. mid lane as well. Super, I was going to say, he was the other kind of saving grace at the moment for the side. He might be fine here, so the raises will miss for the second ball. Connects onto him, he's going to be fine. And now Burning has come in, but oh, this is oh Solo God. there. Solo with the Dukes, able to walk himself around. And he will get himself away. That was absurd duking by Super and Solo. The fact that it should have been a guaranteed kill on the Tiny and a guaranteed kill on the Skyrath Mage and neither one of those kills happen is so weird, but Burning finds the bounty rune to bump him up to level 4 now by 6 minutes in. It's not great. No. I mean, that was, a no he's, he's, that was the second time really he's left the lane trying to find something and it's just not paid off. Very high risk, maybe high reward situations that he's looked to put himself in. And at the moment, and the fact that, well, we haven't really mentioned the man, but we already talked his ass off in the first game. No one's Shadow Fiend. He's, he's having a fine time. 41 for 9. His progression, it's not been hindered at all by the side of Ichi Gaming. And, and this Shadow Fiend's got the potential to just be as scary as he was in game 1. Yeah, if by like 10 minutes Dyer's or 15 minutes, the Radiant Side top. SF is not Radiant's top of the net worth, you've probably done attack. something very wrong. So... Um, he's well on his way to, you know, continue that tradition and be the top net worth. He's hit that level 7. Looks like Vega are going to go for a kill on Fenray here. Yeah, Bernie's going to come with a wrap round here. Has got a crush, but these ancient seals, they're beautifully done. So Fenray, almost over, but I don't know. He's going to be fine. The crush from that time, now super with the rotation. This is the turnaround that VG need. They're trying to find Pasha. He's got a lot of armor, and he might be able to ward this off. He gets healed up by the weave. He's going to salve up as well. Turns around, he's going He gets burning, and Pasha's going to be fine. Now with the ancient seals, the super. Pasha just turns, and he's ready to go with the aggression, the toss is there, but he goes into solo, no one's going to die apart from Tony, gets an avalanche to the face, and now it's starting to pass, you're trying to chase down Super, won't be able to do anything about it, but they get the kill on Burning, they do keep Pasha alive on the Sven, and they do just lose the Skyra, so it's more, more positive action here really for the Sven, and Vici Gaming, they just Radiant don't quite find what would have been a crucial kill onto Pasha at this point. And this is one of the big downsides of the Timber Saw. Uh, Merlina and I were talking about it in the uh, Samail game where he had Timber Saw. Yeah. That uh, Timber Saw is a really bad offlaner right now because he is he just doesn't offer much in the laning phase, and he also needs a, such a significant amount of farm that he's uh, not really viable because if he has a bad laning phase and then he can't Dyer's do anything uh, going into the 20 minute marker. And you could see here, Ice Ice Ice. Um, most other offlaners would have been able to rotate to that fight to bottom lane, um, but instead it was forced on Super's mid and. 
they don't end up winning it. And what's the turn? Like, Ice 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 is getting farm. Yes, he's getting a, a decent amount here. But is he going to have that critical team fighting item, which is probably still Bloodstone, um, for him to be viable enough? Is this going to be fast enough? Is it going to be enough? E either way, I think Vega Squadron will gain Dyer's an advantage. They'll tough. take he's a lot attack. of objectives before Timbersaw is ready, or they'll have such a net worth lead over the Timbersaw that his farm doesn't matter as much. I mean, I was just looking at the super as well. I mean, in terms of net worth, he's, he's on 3k, but it's 1.3 behind this SF. In terms of items, I think he's just got a bracer coming out and 600 gold, so it's still going to be a bit of time before he'll be able to be effective across the map. But I guess that's a Vici game and they just need time. But if there's a team that's not going to give you time, it's going to be Vega Squadron, because they're going to realize that they're in a good position and they're just going to step it up. Top lane, Mag might be in trouble. The dust comes out here from FY. Mag, he'll try and get himself away, but Ice Ice Ice, he chops on the mangoes, goes forward with the chain and with the Whirling Death, and they will find themselves a kill onto the spider there. So it's a, a bit more money onto this Ice 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 Timber Saw, helping him towards that inevitable bloodstone, as you were saying earlier. But it's 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 small things here for VG Gaming, but that they do need them. Oh, bottom lane burning. I think he may be dying here if they have another slow, but no. Again, the crush just uh, enough to save him. But it's it is just saving him at this point. I mean, at this point of the game as well, the Wyvern has got more farm than burning. And bottom lane, the push will come in. Stormhammer is available as well. Burning, he's going to salve up. Got the wrap around Ooh, from so, the Skyrath Mage. Yeah. Burning's build is also very weird. He went for the quote-unquote value level of Bash, um, so he started off 0, 2, and 1, but he had to go back for the sprint Radiant's because you can't just not have sprint. Attack. That's absurd. And you also need early levels in sprint. So level 1 and 2 are not valuable enough, which is why you see oftentimes offlane starters actually go for 2 or 3 levels of sprint uh, ahead of crush. They, they will actually sometimes prioritize sprint over crush because the movement speed is... Um, it's not good enough often yes. at level one. Yeah. No, I mean, what, what is the game plan here for Vici Gaming here? Are they just going to wait for a, for a crucial point themselves? Are they just going to play incredibly defensively? I mean, it certainly feels like Vega haven't been as aggressive as they were in game one. I mean, we're 11 minutes in. They've only found themselves the three kills, but they're kind of focusing more on the farm game here. The fact oh. that they're such looking very... very yeah, happy. absolutely. They're, they're not going to be aggressive no. until well until like 20 minutes because, first of all, they want the mech on the SF. Most likely, they'll want to have BKB against a tiny timber saw. Um, but it's also the fact that Broodmother... Like, yeah. both SF and Broodmother are getting uh, a really good amount of farm. And that's only going to snowball further as the heroes get stronger, right? Broodmother especially um, starts really racking up a large amount of farm because she takes over your whole entire jungle. And this limits the ability of Vici Gaming to farm as well. Um, and you also need the Orchid on Broodmother. So you want to keep this pretty well spread. You would like to be able to establish just a very long laning phase in some ways to make sure that those two cores uh, get as much solo time as possible. And again, we're going to see Burning try for some more aggression. He's come up to the top lane. He's got level 6 and with the Amplifier. They're smoked up himself and Super. Now, Ice 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 moving in onto Mag, and that should dust as well. And this should be enough to set it up. There's the Toss Ward off Burning. Comes straight in, lands onto Mag. They'll get themselves that kill. The TP will be cancelled by Vega. But this time, Burning's aggression and rotation paying off. And they should be able to find a Tier 1 here as well at the top. And this is also, I believe, going to get the money here for Super to be very close to what I imagine is going to be the Blink Dagger straight up on the Tiny. That reminded me of the uh, Secret game where they had the Slardar and Tiny Radiance combination, where Weeha was just tossing misery around constantly and getting kills because of it. Top tower I mean, I guess it, it's, it's one thing, you know, it's like, well, our Slardar didn't really get any farm. It's not going to have its blink, but it doesn't matter, because as you said, the Tiny synergy is it's beautiful in, in those kind of situations. They now got the blink dagger. This is yeah. like all eyes on super right now. Pinchy Gaming have to do something. They have to get some control. They have to shut down the Broodmother, shut down the SF, and that's going to be entirely on super because, again, Ice 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 isn't really ready to go just yet. Um, fortunately, he, like, he's level 11. He's got high amount of experience, but he doesn't have the Bloodstone just yet. And even then, you probably want blink dagger or some sort of mobility item as well. Um, so it's going to have to super filling in the gap before burning is ready, before Ice 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 is ready. Super has to be the one finding the openings. Uh, well, top lane, you're gonna have no one coming up here to join Mag. Uh, let me have to do anything really against Ice Ice Ice. He's, yeah, he's gonna be fine, just Timber chains himself away from trouble. Good discipline. I mean, the fact that they're willing to bring an SF Radiant into a Broodmother lane uh, says a lot about how well they read Vici Gaming's aggression and trying to pick off Mag in that scenario.
Yeah, and, and it looks like, exactly as you said, they get the mech online, they're ready to just group up, go for the pushes. They'll try and take this tier one top here. They'll be happy to take a fight, but so will Vici by the looks of it. They actually smoke themselves up from mid, super uh, burning. And F1, we'll yeah, see. Vega may pay for trying to yeah. get aggressive early here because the mech may not enough. What if he's the first one bursted down by the tiny jump in and the, the this winter's This could be big for Vici, and they should toss forward. Onto Null, when they get the crush as well, they're looking for the SF. The chain comes out, but now their mech's being popped. They're trying to tell the Avalanche what to do, and now the bounce is here for the chain crush. The Winter's Curse combo is beautiful for Vici. They find themselves one. No one does get off the Requiem, but the toss from Super enables them to find themselves the second kill. They will lose Ice Ice Ice, and Solo Mac, they're looking to try and turn this. The Mystic Flare on Tf bringing him low. Mag comes in on the spider. They made it a two for two. Suplex going with the avalanche. Mag's going to be fine. Walks himself off. Shoma just kites him around. But then the toss. The baby kills her mother as it lands on the head of the spider. Solo will end up going down as well here. So it's a messy fight. But Beachy do end up coming out on top. They take the trade. Three for four. But it was... I, I hey. mean, very chaotic fight there. Yeah, I think it was very clear in my mind that Vega yeah. Squadron shouldn't be going for that fight because just having the mech is not enough. Each game you're going to target you first, and that's exactly what they did. Toss the Sardar in. They should have been able to burst down the SF right away, but um, Ice Ice Ice, slight misplay, missed his chain, so he missed his whole entire combination against the SF. So much of that team fight could have gone even better for Vici game. Super misses his avalanche. Ice 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 Dyer's misses all his damage tower. on the SF. If they kill him before the Shallow Grave, then the fight's very clearly one-sided to Vici Gaming's Dyer's favor, and they just steamroll through Vega Squadron from there. Yeah, Dyer's I think the fact as well that we've, we've been talking about the fact that they didn't have the best of starts in some of the lanes, they can still fight that well. That's got to be a big wake-up call for Vega. they got to say, all right, okay, Dyer's we've got our items, but we do still need to be very careful with the amount of aggression we show the offense and passion. He's moving forward here very aggressively. They still feel really confident. I mean, they still group up, push down that middle lane. They're probably thinking that Winter's Curse and um, Chain Frost were down, and those yes. were actually two very key that, abilities. That screwed them up in that fight. That, they, they were some big ults there from Vici. You're, you're right, yeah, without those, the, the fight's going to be a lot harder for Vici games to take. And uh, But know. they're about to come back up. The Winter's Curse is just down here. It's why VG Gaming are trying to find some sort of pickoff. I mean, if they are going to go back in themselves, they did smoke to retreat. It doesn't look like they're going to go for the double back. I mean, they know Burning is still bottom lane. Yeah. They can't get there immediately. Solo. Okay, Solo moves forward. He's found Fenrir here. Fenrir will get Ancient Sealed up with a Mystic Flare as well. They try and close the gap here. The rest of Vega moving forward. They should be able to fight Fenrir. No! Super's never have that touch. They do lose the lift. But now Super's got out of the weave. The massive amount of physical damage coming down. He'll be bursted down. And now, FY. He's not going to get himself out of this one, wow. and that was Vici getting caught Radiant's off guard. And I think, as you said, the fact that they realized that Vici did not have the full roster up there, Vega knew it was time to go. I that was also. I mean, I would have to relook at that scenario, but I think FY made a misplay where he was casting like Cold Embrace and Arctic Burn and maybe a Splinter Blast and never got off his ultimate. And there was actually a very key scenario where Super jumped in expecting that ultimate. He got the combo on two. If there's a follow up there, the Winter's Curse, that fight's a lot more even, but FY didn't have the mana for it and turns out the fight ends up being very one sided. Uh, a three hero exchange to the favor of Vega. Bottom lane. You got Pasha on his own at the moment. Couple of heroes hiding the sidelines, and uh, there's a TP in from the Wyvern as well. So I wish they can set something up. But again, discipline from some of the players of Vega, very nice. Pasha just he's not going to go anywhere. And yeah, now that they've appeared, he pings it out. Actually, it's just going to be Ice Ice revealing himself as a smoke up from burning an FY. He's about to pick up his blink dagger. He really cannot yeah. afford to go down. Hard. Hopefully, he's got the money. He's got the money. He's going to need to find out, Pasha. Has he bought it? Let's check on the. He's no, not he bought it yet. You need to buy your blink, sir. Oh, pass you by it. And he may not be it, dead. It, it, Don't no, come no. in with the mech. <laughs> Maybe they can turn here. They've got the dazzle as well. He's going to be fine. And there he goes. But he buys the blink now casually. He's like, all right. <laughs> I, I knew I was fine. fine. Oh, I was fine. fine. Winter's curse. Amplified damage. No big <laughs> deal. I just walk it off. I mean, that was a, like, that's timber saw as well against a strength hero. It's yeah. really deadly, but... Radiant's eh. bottom tower is Pasha under attack. correctly reads that he's going to be okay. Now has his blink dagger, so he'll be in... Uh, that's what... It was like guaranteed Radiant it was a blink dagger for him and not yes. a BKB because oh. they don't have an initiative. He's really going in for it here. He's seen the supports and he wants to try and give it some. There's the backup from FYS. We'll get his arc to burn out, but... Uh, he's not going to stick around for that fight. And as, as you were saying, blink dagger flash, but also... Blink Dagger for Burning as well has been found, so he has now got that Blink as well on the Slaughter. FY's going to take a Storm Hammer to the face here. And they're just balancing themselves. The Broshan is up as well, so it'll be interesting to see if we see either side go for it anytime soon. Both have 
fairly good potential for taking down a Rosha. Watch for the kill combo to happen here. Okay. Pasha jumps in, stuns, and Skyrim Majels. Oh, oh, well, we are going to see some kind of jump in here for Burning. He's found Mag, and there's your Amplify. Mag will get out of the Orca, but did still get the Amplify out in time of Vega. And I want to fight Pasha. Oh, that's a beautiful stun on that two! And now here we go. Take him down. And with the blink out just in time from Super. And now with the Splinter Blast as well. Isis has moving back in. Oh! There's a Shadow Wave as well, heals them up, the mech as well, Stormhammer onto Ice Ice Ice, they'll move forward, Asha tries to go for it, the Rec Room comes out, Coin of Resident, don't know if he's going to save Ice Ice Ice, and he's certainly not, two down on the side of Vici. So Vega just being a little bit more careful with that fight, and okay, they, the Vici aren't done, they try and move him with the combat to Pasha, Stormhammer will hit onto Super, with the Ice Armor as well in the backup of FY, and Burning, they're not going to go in for that one. So Vega again, just pulling out at the right time. They realize that they come out top in the engagement, and they say, right, we're done. We'll take the two kills. We're not going to give you a chance to get anything in return. I think, again, Ice 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 uh, had a misplay there. He threw the timber chain, um, not looking at his hero, and ended up like chaining a tree right in front of him, which was a very critical play, because if he uh, hits the tree on the far end, he passes through that stun area, um, gets his whole combination off, and the fight's much different. He's not as grouped up with his team, etc. But... Uh, VG Gaming just seemed very off point. I, I very rarely see misplays out of FY. Uh, Ice Ice Ice's play Radiant's is play usually a right. lot more successfully aggressive. Oh, hang on, what did I have one as well? Mags, Mags Ogre Club. Alright. Well, a free curry there for VG. I'll be up with that. I mean, I guess at this point, the Tiny, is he almost certainly going to be looking for that Axe pick here? There's, or is there any reason for him to avoid that this game and look for something else? On the tiny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be Agon yeah. Scepter. Um, it's just gonna be a long time until the right click tiny is good to go. He needs not just Ags, but oh, also Casual AC. play mail or is he gonna go AC first? Eh? Why would he go? Uh, physical dance. Okay, the Sven as well as the Shadow Fiend. And yeah. Tiny is a very low armor hero. So yeah, okay. It's a casual plate mail, and then he'll get the Aghanim Scepter afterwards. Okay. Radiance top yeah, I mean, I mean the axe is very good against, yeah. Especially in this lineup that's looking to just man fight. My mind started going down yeah. some sort of rabbit hole where Shiva's Blink Dagger is the new bet on Shiva's Tiny. Blink. Well, but I, I if know, it happens, no way. You, we heard it here first. We'll see. But anyway, Roche is going to be on the menu here for Vegas. Yeah, they've got all the ults. I mean, they have got the potential to try and fight. They've got to do it soon, though, because Roche has fallen very quickly. Okay, and it goes down. SF will be able to pick it. And I don't think VG will want to do anything off the back of that. So, I mean, maybe if they could have gone for the YOLO jump in and the follow-up with the ults, they could have tried for that, but it would have been a bit risky. Yeah, the problem was that um, Arctic Burn, and this is why people do not usually level up Cold Embrace at all and leave it at level 1. The Cold Embrace, uh, or the Arctic Burn cooldown is critically important for this hero. The fact that he did not have Arctic Burn and couldn't fly over that cliff prevented any sort of initiation. Because if he can't get a follow-up to uh, Tiny's jump-in combination, if he can't get a good Winter's Curse, then Super jumps in for nothing. And here we go, we might see something kick off here. Both teams poised on the edge of a possible war here on the bottom lane. No one. Right, stepping forward carefully here. Super, just with a toss back of one of the creeps. Blink away, disjoint the projectile there from Sky. And this is a, a very crucial spot. Pash is on the side with a blink as well. He's ready to try and find the, the setup if a uh, multiple heroes group up. Um, looks like both teams just don't want to jump. There's an amplifier at the moment, and I went, oh, lost a free gold there for the high size size timber as he cleans up the spider links. Yeah, he needs the two. He's trying to pick up a uh, BKB right now. So he doesn't have to deal with that silence as much. But Pasha is... I mean, if he finds one yeah. hero... Like, if he... For example, FY is too far forward. Blink in, Stormbolt, you're going to have um, an ultimate draw from the Skyrath Mage. And there's nothing Vici Gaming can do to stop that. That'll just be an instant kill on the Winter Wyvern. I mean, this is... Just both teams really trying to... To wait on each other to jump and there's a jump. Pasha goes forward, he spots the Wyvern, and that's the big issue. If you can get him out, the fight's gonna be big, but if I guess the Arctic Burnout, he's gonna be able to get himself off the sideline. No one actually pops his BKB here. He's not gonna be able to do anything with him. There's a fortification. BG might be ready to go back in. Burning and Super moving forward. They've got the blinks. Are they gonna go for it? No, they're just gonna be happy with Vega walking off. Super continuing to chase this down. You've got Shoma on the sidelines. Moving forward, the timber chain won't catch on with the slow. 
But Vega will be forced back in. Okay, show him out. Yeah, they're not the vision. They don't know he's there. He's going to be out. So Vega trying to jump in, but they just don't quite have the damage or control really to, to just deal with Vichy Gaming. So a bit of a bit of an anticlimactic fight there on the bottom lane, which both teams hung around for about a couple of minutes for. Yeah, it seemed like the accommodation wasn't quite there. Skyrath Mage was a bit slow on the Mystic Flare. I don't think he got any Arcane Bolt damage out. Um, his damage is also going to be a bit limited. Um, oh, Skyrath. Well, was. Talking about Skyrath. Solo. He did not want to be up on this top lane. He's fairly tanky, but there is a Tiny here as well. And they'll find themselves the kill. Uh, I mean, Solo was very far out there on that top lane. Yeah, that's Solo through and through, though. He's so, always, always going to go. The four positions, split push. <laughs> Seems like that's not going to change no matter what heroes he's playing. So he's not a lean up, but he'll still try and do it on a Skyrath Mage. He's under attack. Not at all. One lane. I'm trying to force it back out. It looks like, is that going to be Iso Sosa so just going for the BKB? Top of the Bloodstone. Yeah, he's he's very close to it as well. So that's going to be nice from the fight to get him. Fine, Shoma. He's popped down the weave and... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Iso, this is a I mean, signature hero for him, big. and he is not hitting... Timber chain like he should. I, I don't think he there's no way he kills the dazzle there, but it's still just another display of misplays from Ice Ice Ice, which you normally don't see. Well, at this point of the game, you know, Vichy's certainly looking in a lot better state than they were 24 minutes since the last one. And uh, I mean, they certainly seem to have adapted and, and are dealing a lot better with the way that Vega plays this game, but Vega's still in a and they have their, their, their very good kind of uh, upsides of the fact that they, they, they've got the Shadow Fiend. You know, 2.8k now on top of the BKB and the mechanism. They're by no means feeling in any kind of terrible position themselves. They're slightly ahead in terms of net worth. Beachy Gaming, they're certainly, they're not going to be feeling as bad as they were in game one. They've got a lot of potential to grow and the Tiny certainly is going to be doing so shortly. And it was, as you said, the casual plate mail. He's got the point booster. I believe on the Curry as well, he's got one of the component, two in fact. So he's only 1k gold away from the Aghanim. So I'm this sorry. Tiny's going to come online. Did, was that intentional? What? Tiny he's going to be room to time. grow? Yeah. Yeah. Level 16 coming in soon. <laughs> well, well done, Owen. Well done. But this, this Tiny's going to be the issue. We, we talked earlier, we said this is going to be kind of the super show. We, you've got to watch him. You've got to see if he's got what it takes to kind of step up to, to the level that Vega were, were progressing at earlier yeah. on. And he certainly is. He's, he's going to have that axe very, very shortly. I can't say that um, that this game drying out has given Burning time to recover because he certainly hasn't. His net worth is abysmal. But he has gotten to a point where, because he's uh, essentially the three position slaughter, let's not really... Uh, say otherwise, Blink Dagger and Force Staff is all you truly need on a Slardar. Yeah, the luxury absolutely. items like AC and those kind of things, they're nice, but the essentials is having those two mobility items to couple with Slardar. And in that regard, Slardar is now in a good position. Even if his net worth yeah, is abysmal, yeah. he's still gotten late enough into the game where he's good essentially for potentially the rest of the game like this. It's going to be up to Super as well as uh, Ice Eye Science to carry and Burning's going to be more utility. Yeah, and it's, it's certainly something that the VG game has shown us. It, it, can, it can work. I mean, they still, at this point, they've not yet looked for another smoke. They're kind of playing it a bit more careful. I guess kind of hoping that Vega were going to look for some aggression themselves. And they might do so, because SMI is now being picked up on no one. You've got a BKB now done on Mag, on the Broodmother. And, um, I mean, BKB, how's it looking here for Pasha? Yeah, he himself, uh, he's uh, just uh, half the gold short of a recipe. So when those BKBs come online, they may well try and go again. But you've got to remember, Vici Gaming, as well as the fact that they have got a fair bit of magical, they've still got a fair bit of physical as well with the Tiny Slider. The one thing that Vega Squadron still have to do, besides pick up their BKBs, is when they go for the five man, um, they have to be the ones initiating onto BG Gaming. They can't allow um, BG Gaming to get the initiation, to get uh, a combination out from the Tiny, to get the Slardar stun, the Winter's Curse, etc., and stop you from using the BKBs in the beginning of the fight, because potentially heroes can be deleted in this lineup from BG Gaming because they have so much magic and burst damage. Uh, and so much disable time that your BKB may be a very fancy 4k item that gives you a little bit of strength and some damage, right? So it's very essential that when Vega do go for the push that Pasha is able to find the opening to blink in first, even if it's not 
Uh, even if it's a subpar initiation, he still has to be the one determining the tempo. What if they can find no one here? Can no one get a speed here from Tunnel Valley Jumps? Yes! Great reaction from Nobby. Give me straight, but there's the Winter's Curse to cancel the Requiem. Uh, they can look still for it for the second time, but the tossback's there. He just can't get it off. Now he'll be able to get it out. And now they might be able oh, to turn, but Shadow Bear comes out time. No one's going to be fine. Now FY, he may be the first to pull this fight, and he almost said it will. Yeah, one kill down. It's been a one for one, though, as they do still lose no one. Super will fall as well. So it's the Tiny and the Wyvern down at the moment for the SF. Bottom lane, but burning, trying to find Shadow, but he can't quite chase it. Now Ice 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 gets taken down, but he will deny himself there with the bloodstone so it's the three for one passion moving forward he's got the storm hammer but burning there with a blink to disjoint it femur has gone for the tp out of the sidelines and won't be able to cancel it but three heroes down for the side of vici and i've got to say this is a bit deja vu at the first game where vici looked for a smoke and they lose the trade three for one i mean you can find the good play of vega squadron like they literally almost like picture perfect shawl grave coming out from Jonas slayer um Preventing SF from dying for five seconds, which was critical. Even if he still dies, it buys a lot of time and extra oh, damage. Burning. But also, Fuck just yeah. misplays from Vici Gaming. I mean, Burning looks really uncomfortable on this Slardar. He missed a stun on a Dazzle, which was like guaranteed kill in, in, in my mind. I mean, he had amp damage on him. He was down to like 400 HP. If he hits that Slytherin Crush, he gets something out of that fight. And they would have traded Dazzle SF in exchange for Tiny, and I think, what was it, a support that time? That would have been actually decent. But because he missed that and had to go back, the, the fight is very clear to the Vega Squadron as much as possible and get the extra farm there because there is no I mean they know burning I saw there from Scott this, was that intentional well, he's tiny has room to grow him. yeah your BKB may be a dazzle SF in exchange for tiny and I think what was it a support that time that would have been actually decent but because he missed that and had to go back the, the fight is very clear to the Vega Squadron's favor. They end up uh, pushing in and just buying more space for themselves to back up and farm. Uh, uh, VGN, they've got to do something different. And and as you say, maybe it's just burning, just just getting the initial and landing the stuns a little bit better. He's, he's been having a bit of trouble. It's It feels like he's, he's kind of one of the... Obviously, every team now is playing the Slardar. And he's like, yeah, yeah, pick it for me. We'll be fine, lads. But, but at the moment, it's not been one of his best performances. But to give him credit... He's been doing well with the position that he's found himself in after the first 15 minutes of the game. He's still been able to contribute, so I mean, just laying out the amplifiers in the team fights. But Vega at the moment still just looking to be the, the stronger force in this in this uh, game. And it's still a lot of this is down to Super's Tiny. I mean, he did manage to find what 1k gold, okay, on top of the acronyms. I mean, I guess at this point he's got to get what the AC really for the team. And then with that assault cuirass. Then these fights might be a little bit harder for Vega to come out on top. Yeah, if you don't have a Wisp, <laughs> you have to have AC uh, on the Tiny before you can really fight. So, uh, obviously they should contest Roshan, but it's not going to be ideal. Let's see if they try and do it though. Are they going to go for the super? Oh, super! Well, the stun's there, the edges in as well, but the corner brace will be fine, and the double four stars so take him right out of the fight. Actually saving him here for the time being. Max trying to move forward. And now Pasha moving in with the BKB. Super's been caught on the left. Mag will get hold of the place by the Winter's Curse, but he pops the BKB and now Pasha comes in. They're looking to try and turn this. The crush was there, holding back the spare. Pasha continues to move forward. No one's gone down as of yet. Mag walks it off. Burning, is he going to go back in here? Yeah, he's got the blink. Is he gonna jump on? Oh, okay, he's gonna try to jump on the edge. It was already casted on him. Oh, he can't do anything. Gets himself forced up to the high ground. Corner brace is there. Now at the bottom, Super might fight Shimmer this there, but this Jello Grave comes out. Now comes your Chain Frost. Zola's gonna fall. Finally, a casualty in this fight. Shomel will go down as well. That Glee Damage Super finds it. As it's two for one, I make that a three for one. A Super kind of cleaning up. FY, Cold embraces himself. No one to mag. They're kind of all alone here, and Super's moved back in. As Super might just look to chase down no one here. No one. And oh, again, these Avalanche is being whipped. No one's going to walk this off, and it might be all right for the time being. Oh, they I'm sure they're going to die. Oh, yeah, let's just go. Let's get Ice 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 in on the Timber Sword, the BKB. Now available again. It's got a toss this back is... in a second. Uh, they, they're still... Oh, this time the Avalanche will connect. There's the top. They'll get the kill eventually. But okay, that really nice fight there for Vici game. <laughs> what is it back doing? 
<laughs> He's actually like, all right, thanks, no one, thanks for buying me space, buddy. I'll do Roshan solo. Is this solo. gonna work, though? I, know I this don't is think gonna so. Work. This is definitely not gonna work. Yeah. FY's just like, oh, hello, Roshan's low. Oh, what? cheers, cheers, Mag. You, you, you've lowered that one down for us. Oh, look at him, he's gonna go for the steal. He oh. drops Zorb of Venom. Oh, Solo's turned up as well, drops the Mystic oh, Flare. Oh, Mag, he's going for it with the BKB here. He's looking to man up against Maybe Super. And he might just do it. Super turns around with the toss, tosses back the spider, but the spider goes back in the corner, braces there, so Super's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna pass up. Lost the ages to feed Chi, but now the blink forward pass is not done. He gets the storm hammer out, and then man, just <laughs> <laughs> gaming. I, they thought, all right, easy Roche. Max made it, you know, goddamn. They didn't notice the fact that Vega had all respawned, and Vega were heading straight back to the pit with a very angry, angry Sven and Sven. He just cleaved the hell out of them. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to the fact that Vega Squadron went into that fight with a net worth yeah. advantage. The fact that Vici Gaming, they played it really well, right? They they had certain engagements where they were able to force out the, the BKBs, didn't actually get anybody caught in the process. They tried to re-engage, and they won that fight. It just took them so long to kill no one that he got two different BKB charges off. You know how long a fight has to be in order to get two different BKB charges? That's just absurd, right? So it takes them really long to kill him, and then by the time they kill no one, the rest of the team is almost back up and obviously they're able to respond in time for the Roshan. And I mean at the moment, the, the pressure's coming in on the mid, they've got to pop the fortification, Vega will now back off, respecting the fact that Super's going to be back up in 5 seconds. But, uh, look off at the back of that, that fight, so what have we got? So we've actually got, what's that? Uh -huh. uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, That's a uh, Halberd. Halberd coming out, is that for the, who's been the Halberd? The Broodmother? Okay, has a, has a yeah, sage. with the sounds, yeah, I saw that, uh, and I was wondering who that was, yeah. I mean, Tiny is a hero that oftentimes doesn't build BKB. He's got a bit of gold, so he has got that potential if he if he if he notices this halberd. If he sees that sand coming out, do you think he says, "Screw the AC, I need the BKB," or do you think you still just get a salt crash nonetheless? I mean, uh, part of the reason, like Tiny doesn't go BKB a lot, and part of the reason is because yeah. he's oftentimes paired with the Wisp, and there's some uh, disenergy there, and that's it. You know, tether yes. doesn't get blah blah blah, right? Uh, I think you do still go BK. I think you definitely go BK okay. if a halberd is picked up on on super because it's still going to have a certain amount of value. You don't want to be silenced. There's still uh, a decent amount of magic damage against like the orchid and stuff. Um, so I, I still think it would be okay, but it would slow down his late game item progression, which would include things like um, the manta and the butterfly. Yeah, looks like he's gonna go the manta before the. All right. AC. So neither the AC or the BKB. I mean, you mentioned the fact that there is, of course, the Orchid in the game. But, of course, Manta's not going to save you against that Disarm. So, we'll, uh, but nonetheless, it's, it is one of those common pickups here for, for the Tiny. And actually, is this? yeah, Vega are looking for something. They're smoked up. And I'm going to move forward, but it looks like, yeah, Ruchi, I'm aware that something might be happening here. I actually got three at the moment in the jungle here at the Radiant, just the two back towards the base, and Vega are actually going to now wrap back round here. We'll see if they're able to make it back over to their half of the map before the smoke runs out. They've still got a bit of time, and they might find someone here. We're going to see the smoke dispel here, and there's the blink port. They found Burning. Burning, he's got the blink. He'll blink down into the lane. And they chase this. Pasha with the war cry. Moving forward, there's going to be the TP out there from the Lich. They'll all get themselves out. Ichi Gaming very nicely avoiding the, the wraparound gank there from Vega. Uh, so I want to bring something yeah. up. Um, the SNY is a potential item for the Rune. It's very weird, but he could go for an SNY. But okay. I actually want to talk about the other item that he could go for. It oh. would be absolutely weird. Oh, we right? see the silver, silver edge, edge against yeah. uh, the tiny craggy as well as the timber sonic reactive armor. All right. It's actually exceptionally good. I don't think it's a hero on a Broodmother, but who the hell knows what Mag is thinking, right? Like, he, he may be thinking next level, okay, I'm moving around in these fights, I want to be I mean, able to remove that <laughs> passive. It'd be a very weird situation, I don't think that's ever been seen before, but... Uh, oh, this is definitely why? weird game. This man is a dead man. Wyvern down in the mid lane. But yeah, as you said, I mean, maybe. Obviously, Mag, he's, he's the one that's been talking with what the, the number one brood, uh, brood player on Dota buff, and maybe the guy says, like, if there's ever a game you're struggling in, don't <laughs> tell anyone about this. But, but there's a mythical item, the Silver Edge. Yeah.
it will change things. Mid lane, Pasha going in with the God Strength. Takes down the tier 3, but there's the crush, the Winter's Curse as well. They're looking to focus Pasha, but this man's fairly tanky. He gets the BKP out, and now Vega looking to turn. They're forced by Vici Gaming here. Now Vici coming back into a super. They're going to have a blink in a couple of seconds. The blink out is there from the Sven. Can they catch anyone off the back of this? They'll get Mag in the team of chain. There's your dust coming out as well. Will clip the brood mother here. Super wrapping round. Yeah, the avalanche off in the toss as well. Looking for Mag, but Mag gets off the BKB. Now trying to turn. And look at this lifestyle. Nom, 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 nom. Getting the heels up on Super Super. He's cold and braced up over the time being. Vega trying to move forward. Solo gets blasted there by Femra on the glitch. And the Red Queen came off on the sidelines. Didn't quite clip that many people. And Beachy Gaming, are they done? Do they want to try and go in for more here? They seem to be... Yeah, okay, just for a boom, coming through with the crush up to two, they push it there with the god strength. Poor Criswell moves himself off, looks like Vega really don't want to fight this here. No one's in a pretty critical condition, he's going to look for the TP out, shallow grade there as well, do they have a castle? No they don't. The SS is going to be able to get themselves out, the toss will be going to show with the Slayer, they might just be able to find the Dazzle, but no Pash is there with the Storm Miner, saving the Dazzle, the War Cry as well, show it to but there's your quote from Bernie, they do finally find the Dazzle. Pasha is still alive there on the sidelines, and so Solo as well, Solo, oh he's about to have some fun with five men from the side of each game and he's got a ghost scepter but i don't know if it's going to be able to help him here they move forward with the avalanche with the slap to the back from the tiny they'll take down the sky wrath as well so a bit of a messy fight there from Vega, and they were just unable to get themselves out as much as they tried because vici gaming were just straight at their heels and chased them right around the whole map i don't want to flame b god i i really Radiance don't i'm very hesitant to do denied. so there is a very, very small chance that his force staff was on cooldown, and that's the reason that he did not hit the stun on the SF. But no one TP'd out, and Slardar slithering crushed, but he wasn't in range, right? So first of all, he misread the range, okay. right? But another thing is, I clicked on him immediately afterwards, and force staff was on cooldown. I believe what he intended to do was force staff stun, stop the TP out from no one, and then they have a huge kill. Like, screw the two supports. Who really cares about those two from Vega Squadron? It's no one that you really wanted in that kill but the fact that he wasn't able to achieve that means that vici gaming despite playing again very well in that team fight in order to disengage from the bkbs and etc etc uh did not get a big game-changing kill like they should have yes yeah it's it's just been a very weird game it's and been a weird game. it's mostly because certain players have not been performing up to the standards that I expect from them. I expect very good things from Burning. I think he's one of the legends of the Chinese scene for a reason, but it's not this one. It's not Florida, that's for sure. Well, in terms of uh, kind of item progression, what are we seeing? So it was, it was of course, the Halberd on the Broodmother that he ended up going for. I believe that it's that the completed AC by the looks of it here for Pasha. Uh, he just needs to play mail, doesn't he? So, okay, just 400 gold to go, and he'll have that on him himself. So, AC going to be done on Pasha, where you look over the tiny. So, he's got the Hyper Stone, but that is... Okay, and yeah, he's got the Chain Mail as well. So, a little bit behind in terms of the AC progression. But, I mean, one more kind of wow. team fight where Vici find a couple of kills. They'll have their AC as well. Yeah, the thing is, is he can uh, pick up the AC, but he can't go BKB afterwards. I think the Disarm is always going to be uh, a factor here. He's just going to have to accept the fact he's going to be dealing with three second disarm because he has to go mkb next right yeah. you have butterfly and a halberd that's two different heroes that have evasion and the spend is naturally incredibly tanky against your physical damage so you don't want to target him necessarily either so he has to go the mkb so he can target the two evasion type heroes and try and burst them down okay and again it's just that case of buying time here really burning he's fairly deep into enemy territory here he should be fine blinks himself out Wanders away. Ice, 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 just hiding in the tree line. Yeah, he, he realizes it's time to TP out. You can't look for any funky business down there. Yeah, okay, there he is. So he must have had something hiding away. So it, it, it comes out very shortly after this fence. So AC's coming out on both sides. They're, they're both going to be ready for the next fight. We'll probably have an Ag Simmersaw um, quite soon yeah? here. Okay. It's necessary because when your uh, typical burning Slardar is not. Um, actually a, a core factor at all in this game. He's just complete utility and always will be most likely. The Timbersaw has to make up for that in his damage and the best way to do that is get the Aghanim's upgrade, doubling up the Chakrams and um, giving you a little bit more late game possibilities because as this game goes further and further I'm looking at this going I expected Burning to have some level of farm and to have the Tiny take over that one position and Ice 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 be a factor. You'd have three different cores that all deal a lot of damage but Burning isn't a factor 
and so that just leaves the tiny uh, tiny timber saw. And I'm not sure damage-wise if that actually outdoes the SF uh, Sven. And then you're including the Broodmother in that factor as well. Yeah, and one thing nice as well, really, for the side of each. Okay, Mag. Uh, they'll find the crush this time, and here they go. Moving forward with the Amplifier Mag. Pops the BKB. Maybe hoping to try and turn him over some life still. Uh, it's not going to work. Mag goes down. He walked into range there with the mech, but it wasn't enough to save him. There is some reaction here from the side of Vega. We'll see if they want to try and take a final. It looks like they certainly do. Solo moving forward. Now get the slow out onto Super. They're going to be able to jump on this one. F1 turns around. Oh, that wind just curves, but the Shallow Grape comes out in time. No one up with the BKB. Look at Pasha. Moving in with the Ghost Grape. Tried to cleave through the side of Beachy Gaming. Now Super will get the toss back onto Pasha. Pasha continues to move back in. And Ice 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 did Timber Chain him very aggressively there, but he's fine. He's tanky enough to do deal with this amount of damage. The Timber Chain is going to be a bit short, though. Super will find Shoma there on the sidelines. So he takes down Dazzle as well off the back of that fight. And now there's the crushes that you're looking for. Finds themselves a third pick off. No one looks for the TP out. He'll find it. There wasn't any chance of cancelling that one so Vici Gaming finding three heroes not the two that are the high high priority but at least Mag and the two supports to follow suit great uh, very small play but um, has a lot of impact in that fight and will have a lot of impact in future fights is the way that Tiny toss back the Sven uh, basically me ensuring more kiting time against the Sven during that critical god strength BKB timer yeah. um yeah, Ice Ice Ice, is he going Chivas? I think he is, he's got the recipe yeah. and he's got the money from the Mystic and he's got the, the plate mail on it. Yeah, that's fine. And I mean, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of physical damage from Vega between the SF and the Sven. I do think Armor is uh, the right play. I thought that he was going to feel the pressure of like, oh god, I need more damage, but apparently that's not needed. Uh, Vici Gaming win yet another fight as Vega Squadron. I mean, part of it is they tried to force it. And it was a very awkward, staggered initiation. They didn't have Mag there as well, but um, it's still the fact that Vici Gaming were able to win a fight and don't obviously need more damage out of Ice Ice Ice. Apparently, uh, the Shivas is going to be better pickup, obviously utility, greater defense on the Ice 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 Timber Saw, and greater catch as well, as the mobility of the Timber Saw is now going to be paired with a very nice, easy to land slow. Super. Uh, he's going to jump straight in here onto no one with the burning crush to follow up as well. There is the arm on no one, so he's hard to bring down. He'll look for the record and he'll find it. Oh, oh, bursting, burning right down. So he's got to get himself the hell out of there. Now Super will be chased up. The Cold Embrace comes out, but the Mystic Flare's there to negate the heal of the Cold Embrace. Max there with jumps. There'll be the toss onto the spider. Super trying to turn this one around now with the Winter's Cousin to Pasha. But now there will be Shallow Grave Dove. Ice 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 pops the BKB, continues to try and fight, but no one looks for the TP out. He'll get himself away as well. Ice Ice Ice, the BKB's going to come off in a minute here. He's still trying to move forward onto Solo. Oh, oh, the there, super super. From a Pasha, which straight across them with the BKB and the Gold Strike. He'll take down Burning. Now he's got to run though, because Super, fairly tanky. Not going to be able to man fight this. And there we go with the combo, the toss, and the Avalanche. They'll take down Sven as well. He's down for 75 seconds. Mag's trying to fight here, but there's still four heroes very healthy on the side of Peachy. Now no one can caught up by the crack. He gets his BKB out. Ice 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 trying to move forward. And now the Ancient Seals go off. He's ready to continue the fight. Gets the Timber Chain out onto Solo, but you know what? Sorry, Shoma with his shallow graves. They've been huge, but not huge enough. Solo still goes down here in that mid lane fight and Beachy Gaming will find the tier 2 and again Radiance talked about how Vega hit their peak top. earlier it's starting to feel that that peak is certainly falling away especially now at the point where pretty much every hero Radiance with the BKB on Vega is now down to 5 seconds. Yeah, I also Radiance think Vega Squadron are just not attack. taking very Radiance good fights. Uh, again, they were they, like, first of all, they were kind of initiated on. Second of all, like, the Pasha, it looks like an X-level play where he turns around and kills Burning and tries to get out, but uh, the trade-off of him for Burning is very clearly not worth it, and the following fight afterwards wasn't good either. Mag, he's trying to fight here with the BKB, moving in onto Super. Now he's going to turn towards Ice Ice Ice, who's still on the high ground. Ice Ice Ice, Ice. we'll be able to timber a chain away. Now this Ipichi will be forced back, so they don't lose the racks here. Take are able to keep those intact. Still a pretty costly fight here for the side. And uh, just look at the amount of money you're on Super. He's just brought something straight up, hasn't he? What does he do? Okay, yeah, he's gone for the MKB here, and he's pretty much got the money. He just did not turn a fight onto Mag. Mag's trying to move with no one. Pash is there as well with the Storm Hammer. It's going to connect onto Super with the God Strength as well. FY's on the high ground. Mag's continues to try and chomp him down here. They've got the help of Shoma and Solus. So they will find that kill. No one's trying to move forward, but Vici have backed themselves away. There's your, but there's your axe now on Timbersaw. So still some big, big item pickups coming out for the side of Vici Gaming. I mean, MKB done on Tiny.
And these fights just got so much easier now that they yeah. have essentially double damage on Timbersaw with two different chakrams. You now have uh, are able to deal with the evasion as well, as well as I forgot to mention the mispercented chance of incapacitating bite that Mag brings to the table, all cleared through by that MKB. Vega Squatch and better get one hell of initiation in this fight because every single time they go and they, they try and get some sort of fight, some sort of hold, they're always being beautifully disengaged on by VG Gaming. The supports are playing exceptionally well in that regard, always saving the right hero. Look at them, guys. Are they going to try and go straight to the high ground? But this is a, a bit of a kind of a hazard play because if they, they don't get away with this, it's going to really hurt them. 13 seconds still without the wipe and burning again with these crushes just a little bit off the point. Let's see if Vega can do it. They're trying to move ice ice ice. He gets the Shivas out. Back off. No one. Just start to be channeling that Requiem and burning. Now he'll find the cross onto no one. Super's moving forward. Silent straight away onto FY. Now he's pulling Mystic Flare. We'll get the gun. Kev has going to be fine. Gets his up out and Requiem flies through the chain cross though. It's going to bounce and look at the cross. The, uh, the ultimate as well from Ivan. Holding back in place. He goes low. He has got the shallow grave, but it'll almost certainly still go down. He's going to be two down here for the side of Vega. No one's in a lot of trouble as well. Caught in the middle. Triple kill for Ice Ice Ice. And they may just find more. Burning gets the crush onto Pasha. They'll close the gap here with the Shivas. And I said that fight was going to be incredibly costly if Vega don't come out top. And with four heroes down, that was a little bit of a desperation play there from Vega trying to go for the racks. And they just can't do it against the five man of Vici. The way I was going to describe that fight was that if Vega Squadron do not win or draw even, that it's lights out for them. And yeah, I really do believe that it's great for the games. Like, but not Vega, on the spend. Yeah, Vega will probably be able to like force one last desperation team fight, but they've just given up like over 12,000, 14,000 gold. They're gonna lose like probably two different lanes of racks this year at the bare minimum. I mean, here are your buybacks, but they're gonna be fighting without a spend, and I don't know if they can do that. Oh, they're trying to go on up, but this this timber saw is just so tanky. He moves himself out. Amplifies they down onto Mag. The silence is down to burning, so he can't get the crush off. Now they're trying to chase for the BKB. He's forcing Vici back out of the base. 20 seconds before the spent is back. So if they can buy this time here, they might be alright. Mystic Flare comes down for Vici Gaming. They're just too strong. They've taken down Mag. That's a dieback on your brood mother. No one's never to be going down. It's like GG well played is cool. Vega just leaving it too late. We talked about this at the beginning of the entire series. You can deal with Vici in the early game. You can take a win. 26 minute was the first victory for Vega. You try and take it late. Vici gaming is just a little bit smarter about the decisions they make. But hats off to Vega because they certainly gave it their all. Yeah, Vega Squadron were actually so damn close to being able to just 2-0 VG Gaming like this. I think they um, made uh, a few mistakes going into the mid game that possibly slowed down their game. But VG Gaming also just played really well on their supports. Exceptionally well done. Always having the right saving mechanisms. And Vega Squadron, uh, I think they're probably still going to feel confident going into oh, game yeah. three and just yeah. say, okay, we're